Well, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Today is November the 10th, and tonight we're going to be looking at Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Yeah, I hope you have a Bible close by, and you'll open up with us to Psalm 90 and kind of follow along as we look at God's Word tonight. Uh, thank you for being with us. I want to begin, as we usually do, with a season of prayer and uh, encourage you to pray for those that are on your heart, those that may be suffering with uh, physical difficulties, uh, those who may be suffering from family struggles, just issues within the family that can weigh the heart down, or it may be financial difficulties that uh, people we know are wrestling with. But lift them up to God in this time and uh, pray that God will be with them and encourage their hearts and help them through whatever difficulty uh, may be before them. Tonight we're going to be looking at Psalm 90, and this is a psalm where uh, the individual is crying out on behalf of the community, and he's praying about the sin uh, that plagues the people, and because of the sin, they realize that God has turned his face away from them or become angry with them, and uh, you may yourself be aware of someone who is struggling because of sin in their life or the sin of someone else that is creating difficulties for them. But uh, as we pray, lift those up that you know are, are struggling with any issue of life. It is so good, and this psalm reminds us, it is so good that we can cry out to God and know that as we pray to him, he hears us. So let's pray together as we begin tonight. Father, thank you for this time when we can come into your presence and we realize that people who are watching this will gather with us at whatever time of uh, and uh, we realize that we may not be together physically we may not even be together at the very same time but I, Lord I pray that you'll help us as we cry out to you and that uh, we'll lift up to you all of those uh, that you have placed on our hearts uh, maybe we love them deeply because of their family, because of their friends, uh, because we know of the situation they're going through. Uh, they're just heavy on our minds. And Father, I pray that we will learn tonight from the instructions of the psalmist uh, to cry out to you. And may we cry out for your favor. May we cry out for your wisdom. How do we live? How do we make it through the difficulties that we have to face uh, in this life you have given us. Father, we do pray for those that have lost loved ones, for those that are struggling with health issues. I pray that you'll bring strength and encouragement into their heart. For those who struggle with issues on their job or in their family, Father, whatever the struggle may be during this difficult season of their life, I pray that you'll be with them very closely. And Father, I pray for us as we open your word. I just pray for those who will be watching and I pray that it'll be a time when you will instruct us from the words uh, of this wonderful psalm. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for all of those that will uh, be a part of this study. And I just pray now you'll bless us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight, we do want to look at Psalm 90, as I mentioned. And uh, Psalm 90 is uh, not a very long psalm, although uh, there are 17 verses we want to look at. Uh, but it easily sort of divides itself up into three different categories, and I'll sort of make note of those categories as we go along. Uh, it is a time where the psalmist is uh, crying out to God because of difficulties, and the psalm is not, uh, does not lead us to wonder what is going on. We recognize from the psalm itself that there is sin among the people of God, and that has brought about the anger of God upon the people, and now they are crying out for his mercy. Uh, in the middle of the psalm, there are a couple of verses where the psalmist is crying out for wisdom. Lord, give us wisdom as to how we live in this very difficult time. Now, there are a couple of things we need to think about, and <laughs> as we live in the day in which we live, I think you'll readily begin to see all of this taking place uh, in our world even today. Uh, the nation is going through difficulty. 
It is a very difficult psalm to place in a particular time. It could be uh, during the times when the, it, the, when the people of God were wandering in the wilderness, some of the difficulties that they had to go through during that time. It could be written much later uh, during the time that the people were going into the Babylonian captivity or the Assyrian captivity. We don't really know when the psalm is written, uh, but the people are crying out, and they're crying out for mercy so that God will give them wisdom and that God will show them his favor in these difficult times. Now, one of the reasons we need to think about this is because even though the nation had somewhat rebelled against God, there, there must have been those who really loved God and wanted the nation to do better than they were doing. What happens when everything around us is turning bad and yet we desire to be faithful to God. Does that mean that we're sinless? No, nobody is ever sinless. But there are times, and we see it here in our nation, where the nation seems to be turning its back on God, and yet there are those in churches all across America that are still trying their best to be faithful to God, still reading their Bible, still attending their churches, still doing for others and still fellowshipping together. And yet the nation around us seems to be crumbling more and more and more, uh, turning against the things of God. Well, how do we manage during those difficult times? Well, I think the psalmist gives us some instruction uh, in, that, in that particular issue. Now, I mentioned the date and how, when was this psalm written and what period of time was it written about. We really don't know. And the title helps us to some degree because the title says that this is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Now, many scholars believe that it is exactly what it says, a prayer of Moses, and that Moses is praying on behalf of the people. Could have been during some of the wilderness wandering, some of the issues they had to deal with. And Moses is praying for the people because he knows vastly as a nation Many of the people have turned against God and they are suffering because of their sin. But he knows that there are those within the camp who really don't know what to do. They see what's taking place. And so Moses is really praying for them that God will give them wisdom and that God will show them favor even in the midst of the difficulty that the rebellious nation has brought about. For those who give it a later date and say that it could have been written during one of the exiles or during the time that the exile was taking place. They give it the title, uh, the Psalm of Moses, the man of God, simply because they are taking words from Deuteronomy chapter 32 and Deuteronomy chapter 33. And you see these words embedded in the Psalm as you read and as you compare those passages you, you immediately begin to see that's where a lot of this psalm is coming from. And so they are taking a prayer of Moses or taking the words of Moses and they're praying them to God. It's not like they're trying to get extra credit by using Moses', Moses name, but they really are quoting Moses so much uh, that the people say this is a prayer of Moses, even though Moses has been dead and gone for long periods of time. But anyway, as I said, we see that the psalm is sort of broken up into three different categories. And the first category has to do with kind of a hymn-like uh, portion of the psalm where they are singing praise to God. They are acknowledging uh, that God is an eternal God. It's so interesting because after they acknowledge how eternal God is, it is as though they take a sharp turn and they start talking about how frail man is. And of course, man is frail. And uh, we see people get, growing sick and dying all the time. And you just kind of wonder in the midst of that, what, what do we do uh, when we're watching the devastation that the world is falling apart around us? Well, I think the psalmist uh, gives us some help in that direction. First of all, notice, if you would, how he points us to the fact that God is an eternal God. Verse number one, you have, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, all time, all generations. 
Before the mountains were born, you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So the psalmist is praying, and really, I think he's reminding himself, but he is honoring God with these words, reminding himself and praising God for the fact that God is an eternal God from all generations, all generations, past, all generations, future, God is God. I love that line, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Uh, he's at least acknowledging God. If you'll notice, there is a sharp train, a change in the psalm. Verse number three, he turns to man. <laughs> and man doesn't get <laughs> near the praise that God gets. As a matter of fact, he's just flat out honest that uh, man is nothing but dust. That's how verse number three begins. Lord, you have, uh, you turn men back to dust, uh, saying, return to dust, O son of man. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like new grass in the morning, though in the morning they spring up new. By evening it's dry and it's withered. <laughs> Basically, he's acknowledging that man is nothing more than dust. Basically, he's acknowledging that we're, our lifespan is just like uh, just a moment. God lives eternally, and yet man, uh, when you begin to compare the two, it's just moments that man is here on the face of the earth. Um, and we have seen uh, plants that come up beautiful in the morning, but the heat of day sometimes can cause them to wither. Well, that's exactly what the psalmist is trying to say about man. Now, in verse number seven, as he's talking about man, he wants us to know exactly why man is having the difficulties that he is having. Whatever period of time he is writing about, the difficulties are happening upon them because of one thing, and that is that mankind has just rebelled against God. And this is what he talks about. Look at verse number seven. We are consumed by your anger. And we are terrified by your indignation. You have seen our iniquity before you. You've said it right there in your face. And it's because of our iniquity that you have gotten so angry. It's because of our sin that we are having to face your indignation during this time. Notice in verse number eight, he even talks about our secret sins. <laughs> Uh, it wouldn't it be horrible if if the world knew all there was to know about us? Well, the truth of the matter is, God does. There are no secret sins. Notice what He says there, verse number eight. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sin, in the light of your presence. We thought we had it hid away. We thought it was gone. We could hide this sin, but God says there are no secret sins. I'm just going to bring them out in the light of my presence. Look at verse number nine. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days are 70 years or 80 if we have the strength. Yet the span uh, is but trouble and sorrow. We may live to be 70 or 80 years but man, just think about all the difficulties that we have to face. And the reason we face those difficulties is because of our sin. They are but filled with trouble and sorrow. They quickly pass by. They simply fly away. Now, I have no idea the age of those that listen to this uh, message. But as you think about your age... I'm sure you are like me. Now, I'll be honest, I turned 64 just a few weeks ago. But as I think about my life, I, I think about, now, where have those 64 years have gone? I mean, it wasn't that long uh, that, you know, I was in high school and then I was in college and my kids were small and now my kids have kids. Uh, and you just kind of look at their lives and you realize, man, my life has just quickly flown by. That's exactly what the psalmist is talking about. But he's acknowledging that God is 
bringing down his anger on mankind because they are living in sin. Now, in verse number 11, we see where the psalmist is praying that for those who are trying to live faithfully uh, in pursuing the things of God while the rest of the world is turning away from him, uh, God, he's praying that God will give them wisdom for how do we live during that time when we're doing our best to be faithful. And yet, uh, you know, even the influence of sin has caused my life to be hard. Uh, temptations that I've never had before, I have now. Uh, and so the psalmist is praying that God will give them wisdom uh, during these difficult times. Verse number 11, who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is great as the fear is due to you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And that's what we need in the midst of difficult times. Uh, I was talking to a lady the other day, and uh, suddenly she woke up and realized her world was falling apart. Uh, no, no, nothing of her own. Uh, it was something someone else had done, but it greatly affected her heart. It hadn't affected her physically, but it really did weigh upon her heart, this issue that arose in her life. And uh, that's exactly what the psalmist is talking about, someone trying to do right, but the world around us has turned so bad and it greatly affects the life that I live. And the psalmist now is praying that God will give us wisdom for those difficult days. Verse number 13, the psalmist is actually praying that God will change his mind. Lord, you are angry because of our sin, but I'm going to ask you to forgive us. I'm going to ask you to grant us favor, even though you are very angry with us. Verse number 13, relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. We are facing these difficulties because of our sin, but Lord, help us to repent Help us to turn away from our sin. Help us to turn to you with all of our heart. And Lord, then as we turn to you, we pray that you'll relent of your anger, that you'll satisfy in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all of our days. It's as though he realizes that joy and gladness is gone from their life, and he's asking God to bring that joy and bring that gladness back into their life. And he, he doesn't just want to experience joy and gladness. He wants to be able to sing about it. And sometimes that's what we need to do. We just need to sing the praises of God, even in the midst of the bad times. That can be a witness to other people. Uh, that can be a witness to our own heart and lift our own hearts. Well, verse number 15 Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servant and your splendor to your children. God, we want to see you work in our midst again. And so the psalmist is crying out for God to do something. Verse number 17, he simply says, May the favor of the Lord rest upon us. Instead of your anger, instead of the indignation that we are experiencing. Lord, would you allow your favor to rest upon us and establish the work of our hands for us? Yes, establish the work of our hands. The message of this psalm would be useful under any kind of experience in life because there's always somebody going through a difficult time. And in the midst of the difficult season, uh, we simply need to pray for the world and the con condition of sin uh, in which our world is at any given moment in time. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says over in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 15 through 17. Paul says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. In the midst of overwhelming difficulty, 
The psalmist acknowledges that God is eternal. God needs to be praised because he alone is God. And yet on the other end of the spectrum is man. Man is nothing more than dust. Man's life seems to be no more than like a blade of grass that springs up wonderful and new in the morning, and yet by the end of the day it's withered and it is gone. Our life does seem short. But in the midst of all of that, he's praying that we will have wisdom in knowing how to live in the difficulties of our life. And then he prays that God will show them favor upon their life. And my prayer is that God will show you favor. I have no idea what you may be going through. Have no, have no idea what difficulties you may be facing in this season of your life. But I am praying that God will give you wisdom. And as the psalmist prays, I pray for you, that God will give you favor even in the midst of the difficulties that you experience from day to day. Thank you for being a part of this uh, Bible study. And I pray that maybe something I have said will help you to turn your heart to God and put your trust in him fresh and new. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this time together. And Lord, we do honor you as the eternal God. You are the God who was there when the world began. And you are the God who has created such a beautiful world around us. And we just give you thanks, especially during these fall days as we notice the beauty of the fall colors being painted on our world day after day. Father, help us to acknowledge you as God. You alone are God. And we're just dust. Our life is so brief. It's nothing compared to who you are. But Father, I pray you'll give us wisdom for the days in which we live. I pray that you'll grant us favor upon our life. I pray you'll forgive us of our sin. As a people, as a nation, I pray that you'll help us to learn how to repent of our sin and turn to you. Father, we thank you for all the many things you do for us, especially all that you have done for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just pray now your blessings upon each and every person. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.